And it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Chris Kende Wandu will be joining us this morning as the Executive Director of African Governance and Leadership Initiative right here in Lagos. Chris, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, uh, Kofi and Mercy. How did they take get for a go off yourself? Plus, when I get the petrol station for the for the back here, Daddy. Yeah, uh, well, we're trying. You know, in Lagos State, we have a a, a new rule that is in in, in force, which is uh, 9 p.m. 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. No no sale of uh, petrol outside those hours. So they don't they don't cancel that one. No, me and my bicycle like this now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to the crux of the matter now. Uh, we're starting off with the Punch newspaper, and uh, it talks about power outage disrupts APC rally, stops Buhari, Tunubu's speech. Well, uh, that's what you find there. APC National Working Committee to probe incident says uh, Bauchi rally successful. Really? So what's, what's, what's the probing about that, you know, we, be, because if you live in Lagos, I mean, recently, Kofi, I really don't know, you remember the other time you talked about where you live and uh, the fact that, you know, power is always constant. I don't know yes, if that's yes, the yes. case. Uh, Buhari supporting Tinubu directed governors to ensure victory. You also find CBN <coughs> bars, Abuja, Lagos, POS operators. Uh, that's according to uh, the report here you find on the punch uh, regards cash swap. CBN bars Abuja, Lagos POS operators. Federal government forecasts fresh flooding in Plateau by also orders. Lagos project jobs or Lagos project jobs as president opens rice mill and seaports. Nigerians now have alternative to PDP. APC, uh, the Kwankwaso is quoted to say, well, that's the much we can take this morning on the punch. We go to the Nation News, a few of the headlines, a big one there, Buhari's declaration in Bochi, uh, Tinubu is incoming president, so what the president is saying, why North should vote for ex-governor by Lawan Bajabia Miller, PDP abandoned region to Boko Haram, uh, that's from the Pauchi um, uh, 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 rally. A court to DSS, charged terrorists Negotiator Tukuru Mamo caught to DSS charge terrorist negotiator Tukuru Mamo. Uh, some of the headlines. Look at some others as time permits us. Well, let's uh, turn our attention to uh, the Daily Trust newspaper. Nigerians fear massive losses as deadline draws near. Uh, we're talking about the old Naira note. Business owners give January 20 feet as deadline. Business owners give January 25th as deadline and food prices store as traders reject all notes. Family reject all notes as bright price. Oh, really? NPC begins training of 786,741 uh, you know, workers for the census. Excitement as Buhari commissions 1.5 billion lucky deep sea Port. Ohanese places 37 million naira bounty on IPOP leader and uh, air passengers or airline count losses as passengers stranded as workers ground the airport. These are some of the headlines on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Very quickly, uh, take a few off the front page of the Vanguard or the Guardian rather. Uh, 65 million naira losses. NPA shots Lagos port over Buhari's visit is uh, quite interesting freight forwarders kick as cargoes get trapped police unleash dogs on them buhari commissions 1.5 billion dollar lekki port lagos rice mill <coughs> excuse me lekki port can handle four times a papa tin can cargoes i don't know who said that but that's what someone uh, that commissioning said uh, quite interesting picture of uh, president buhari uh, with the governor of lagos state uh, dr Biodu governor basically governors from the southwest uh, uh, part of Nigeria um, with him. We can also see a picture of stranded passengers at one of the airport, Lagos airport, uh, uh, over that same suspended strike. All right, uh, we'll look at more of these as we go on as well. Um, PSC denies supporting elongation of IGP's tenor. Nigeria records 123 confirmed cases of diphtheria and 38 deaths. Uh, some of the headlines on the front page of the Guardian. Let's bring in Chris Kendi Wando 
uh, at this point. Chris, we'll start with the story on the front page of The Guardian. Um, we hear that apart from the roads that were shut or close to public uh, vehicular and human traffic yesterday because of the president's visit, he has since gone to Senegal. By the way, I don't know if he's coming back to Lagos to continue the commissioning today because there's some things he's meant to do today as well. But apart from the roads that were closed, we hear that the, the MPA shot the Lagos port. Um, this is the Nigeria Port Authority. Total closure of uh, the Lagos port following uh, the president's visit. 65 million naira lost yesterday uh, as cargoes got trapped is what they're saying. There was a total closure of the facility and restriction of access to the port uh, by users. What are your thoughts on this, um, uh, this development? Yes, um, thank you, Kofi. Um, we need to put certain things into perspective. I was listening to you, both of you, before the commencement of the newspaper headlines. And you were um, talking about the issue of uh, the roads, um, movements, um, but something is obvious that both of you seem to, it seems that you don't go beyond Victoria Island, Lekki and Ipoye as big boys and big girls. You don't, <laughs> don't, don't be too sure, Chris. Don't be too sure. <laughs> you know, you don't, I'm very sure because from what you are saying, both of you are saying, it's obvious you don't move beyond that. There's a lot that have been put in place um, for those um, in terms of the road for the benefit of our, our uh, those watching us. Now, the, if you uh, if you move on that as it will see that after um, the second toll gate that's supposed to be the top, second toll gate through Lekki um, uh, up to Aja um, uh, moving to Songotedo um, down to Awoyaya there is massive construction going on. In fact, you, if you if you are used to the BGC. If you get to Vigis now, you might not know the place because there's also a very big bridge being built there. Well, Mrs. is here. She didn't say anything. Thank you, Chris, for informing us. Mrs. is here. Wait, oh, no. wait now. <laughs> wait, me. Let, me enlighten, let me enlighten you a bit. Now, because she stays that there. Road is yes, that road has been expanded. And that, I think, is part of the development. You know. But the key one is not even that. The key one is that the road from Ijebode to Ekwe has been completed. The fact is that the Ogun State government, uh, led by Dapa Biodun, has constructed from, um, from Ijebode to a certain point. Okay? Um, on that, it. Then, Lagos start, then Lagos started there from Eleko Randa, Randa, but if you know Eleko very well, Eleko, yes, down to yes. Ekwe. So that as this has been opened up, is a large expanse of road. So what that means is that Vehicle, majority of the vehicles coming from the south, east, south, south, and the rest of them that are coming to, especially tankers and the rest of them, that come through the only Aziz, through um, Bega, entering to, um, emptying to Ojota, um, going through Apapa Ocean Expressway, and also for the, uh, those of you that are, that are also in the mainland. When you come to, uh, where you're going to come to Ojo Elegba, you see that lineup of th um, tankers from there up to Apapa, mm. that will not happen again. Okay. If that um, uh, this thing comes, so they have no business coming into because they come through that place, enter the uh, uh, from, enter from Ijebode uh, as is through Ekwe, and they clear out from there. So that vehicle also um, the trucks are going to be lifting from the uh, um, deep sea. So there's a lot of projects, but that does not necessarily mean that on that that there will, you will not have trucks coming also on this other as is. So a lot of a lot has been put in place in that. But the, definitely the fact remains that there's going to be a huge regular traffic on that route. Once that um, uh, deep sea has been opened, don't forget the airport is also coming there. There's another airport that is coming there. Then with the refinery, the Dangote refinery, it is going to be a hell of traffic. But it will be is that with the opening of the president have is, is just we commission that as is from Eleko to Ekpe. That is one of the projects it's going to commission. So um, I think it's well thought out and they have solutions to some of this. It might not be total, but it also is of the problem we presently, those of us in the mainland are having heading to Apapa. Most of those traffic will be moved to that as it. Okay, but, but so, Chris, uh, yeah, but, the, the government of Lagos State did say that they were going to ensure that the access road to the port was changed to six lanes. And it's what we're wondering if that has been done. 
Um, yes, indeed, you're right. Especially from Chris. especially from Aja to Aleko. So, so, yeah. so, can you tell us? Yes. Do you, are you aware of, of that? No. If that has been done? I mean, um, Kofi, just yes. before just before Chris, uh, you know, I mean, continues with his thoughts. It's a good thing that you mentioned that. But not as you have thought that we don't move around. I have of recent time move around that particular road. I mean, if it's the same road you and I are talking about, the same road that if you're coming, you know, through Ekbe, if you're coming from uh, Bini or you're coming from Asaba, you have to navigate that way, uh, you know, through Ekbe. If it's the same road we're talking about, I, I, I don't see any six lane construction there. I know that there's construction going on, that's going on, but you know, it's some part of the road because you still have some part of the road that has not been graded. So you have sand and you know what it is that you're, you know, driving your vehicle on this sand that you find in the beach. So I, I'm just wondering, and the yeah. construction, you know, we, there's also a diversion, just like you have mentioned around the VGC axis, which is, you know, the Aja aspect of it. But, you know, that's been going on for a, a long time. And we don't even know how, how fast, you know, we're going to get to that point because it looks like 2023 might come to an end and that project is still, you know, going to be worked on. So uh, we're still, you know, trying to understand how government seem to manage the movement of, uh, you know, goods, persons, with all of these projects. They're very good. But how do they intend to manage that with a poor road network? The essence of that, that project is to ease off the concentration in the mainland. That is that is the problem. We, they need to ease off the concentration. Why you are having so much traffic especially within the mainland is the fact that everything, let's even take the tankers, everybody come from across Nigeria to Apapa to come and pick fuel. That is a major problem. And you continue to ask yourself, why is this so? And the problem is also because most of the other refineries are not working. If the refinery in Wari is working, those in the south, south, and south east will go to the go, go to Wari. If the one in Kaduna is working, those coming from the north will go to uh, um, Kaduna. We go to Kaduna, and they're supposed to also be one in in, in Wari. So those are the issues. Everybody comes into that. So the essence is to be able to then the seaport. Practically the seaport in Nigeria, none of them are functioning except that of Apapa. There's supposed to be one in Coco, there's supposed to be one in Calabar, there's supposed to be, Portacos also has supposed to have one. Even on Nisha, there's supposed to be a, 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 a port a, 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 in, a, in Onisha. But the place, that has not been dredged. So you can see that massive movement. So what they are doing now is trying to now focus and make sure that they move some of these things to the uh, to the island, towards the Ekwe area, so that you come, you don't need to come into um, the Kodu Road, you don't need to come to Lagos if address first way, see the way that place is true. They are moving some of these things away from them. Then also realize that we only have one airport. If you are living in Aja, or you are living in Ekbe, or you are living anywhere, and you must catch a flight going out of Lagos, either internationally or locally, it's either you're living by 2 a.m. to to pick a flight, a local flight, to any part of the country from Dazis. But with the cargo airport that the airport that you are also building in Dazis. Um, that also is it. So what I'm saying is, it's is a gradual thing. That road, major, I would say about eighty percent of that road has been done. I don't know whether I, can, I was not counting whether it's six or eight lane or seven, right. but I know right. I've been there of recent. They Augustine yeah. have done their own part. Lagos State has just finished to join in in Ekwe, and the majority of that um, close to about 80, 90 percent of that. Was, Oh. It might be expanded with time. Yeah, quick, quick, Chris, it... very quickly, please. Uh, thank you for the information. And uh, Mercy has now also told us where she lives. <laughs> thank you very much. But um, no, uh, she was coming the, from the East. She doesn't yeah. live there. Mm. What are your thoughts on on, on, <laughs> on the the pension? Because the paper is talking about a closure or restriction, or strict access control um, that was implemented at the Lagos Sport, um, which meant that um, that's PTML area of Tinkan Island since last weekend because the president was meant to visit there to commission a lubricant factory set up by MRS today. But he's in, he went to Senegal yesterday, so I don't know how that's going to work. Um, and so, so we're hearing that the freight forwarders and you know, people who do business, they could not access the place and they're complaining. That's number one. Number two, um, because we're looking at what's on the front page of, of The Guardian, I want you to talk about the rice factory, the Inimota uh, Ekodu. Uh, some people feel it's a, not a, it doesn't make economic sense because we don't have rice. We don't plant rice in quantity enough to supply that factory in Lagos. You have to bring it from 
from uh, states outside Lagos State. So just please talk about those two uh, stories. The closure for me was what is not necessary. Uh, that is crippling the economic activities of Lagos State because the president is, is coming to them. It doesn't make any sense to me. The president doesn't have to pass through the road. All they need to do is have him on a chopper. Wherever he is, he's in Ikeja, you have him on a chopper. He drops, he drops there, commission what he wants to commission, and leave. That is why if you look at the president of the United States, once Air Force One drops, you will see a smaller chopper like a helicopter that will pick him up and take him to wherever he's going to. You don't see him, him you don't see them shutting down the highway just because um, the, uh, the president is coming to a certain state or whatever. And the only time I've seen the highway short, even if it was not even short, it was, I think it was short, it was not even short, it was it short, it was during the burial, um, the burial ceremony of the Queen of England. And you could see where for hours that that um, hairs was moving, you would still see people moving around and the rest of them. But this part of the country, uh, we want to play the ostrich, but probably it's for security reasons. Um, but I know that the Lagos State government have put so much uh, in place, and there have been announcements in the past one week on the various diversion that was going to happen in Lagos, in the island and mainland, and even the Apapa area. And um, Nigerians have been told. Um, that's, but that is how we roll. That is how we play our game here. But I believe that shutting down the practically the only one seaport that we have, just because the president is uh, visiting, doesn't make any economic sense to me. All right, All right. Uh, uh, Chris, quickly. quickly, quickly. quickly. Uh, uh, Messi Hall, sorry. Just quickly, the, the earlier one I, I raised, which was the. Yes, the rice. Right. Yes, right. Well, well, don't forget that the Lagos State government invested in, in that rice um, uh, project in, I think, in Gombe, one of those states. That is, they have Lagos. They have rice farms in, in that state. I know there's a, a collaboration between Lagos State and I think the state government. And um, so I probably think that they are bringing they bring those rice to Lagos. For they don't forget that even if you mill that rice in in Gombe or whatever it comes, you are still going to transport it back to Lagos. And um, so I, I don't know the rationale behind setting up that. But it will also be an opportunity for them to create jobs for Lagosians. And also probably make the rice cheaper uh, in Lagos State. Uh, but I don't know the rationale behind uh, milling, uh, having that rice uh, um, this thing, the plantation in Gobe, and not bring it to Lagos to for uh, milling. I don't know why that. So, uh, Chris, let's look at the punch quickly. Uh, the punch talks about the power outage that disrupted the APC rally and stops the president's speech and also. Uh, the presidential candidate speech to Nobu right there. But uh, what's of interest is the uh, APC National Working Committee's intention to probe. I mean, I thought that that's how we roll, and we know that uh, we, we don't have uh, constant power supply. Is there anything to probe? Feels like we're, uh, you know, trying to be very acting different. Messi, are you not happy that that power went off? Uh, how, how how can you say that? <laughs> I, in fact, anywhere the president goes, the, the light should go up. That is that is what should be wherever he goes, and uh, and they are not using generator, and they should put him on uh, uh, NEPA or whatever you call it, so that the light goes on. You know when these people are in their comfort zones uh, within the Asoro and also in state houses where you have generator running twenty four seven, they don't know what we are going through. So what I just referred yesterday it was a picture of what the masses are, are going to. What are you going to prove that the generator didn't work or the that uh, the light supply went off? Yes, you definitely have to. If you have been doing what you are supposed to do, then you won't have that embarrassment. It was very. I was happy. You know why I'm happy? The president didn't make his speech. The black buyer of APC also didn't make his speech. So let me just see what they are going to campaign with. You say you are going to supply electricity to Nigerians for eight years. You couldn't do anything. You you couldn't increase the capacity. And continue blaming uh, uh, when you ask them, they say, Oh, a PDP was there for 16 years. Why didn't they do it? I had somebody on my program on Friday, uh, Inside Politics with CKN, uh, at one of the TV stations, which I host every Friday. And the person who was asked, What will APC use to campaign? He said, Oh, uh, uh, don't forget that PDP was there for 16 years. It's take time for you to be able to write the wrong. I said, You take eight years to write the wrong. Is that possible? Is that what you, you are going to tell Nigerians? Why we should go to? So, what they can investigate from here to Kingdom Come, they, they know what we've been suffering. 
I am present in my house. I've not had uh, life for the past 24 Chris, hours. Chris, if you were day happy day. that there was power outage when the president was about to speak, I wasn't, I'm, I'm not happy very, about very it. Happy. I, I'm very happy. I, I'm not happy about it because he's my president. And I, I, don't, I don't think that, you know, if that's quite embarrassing. Right thing, the light will be going off. Okay. If he has done the right thing, it will go off. So I'm happy. They should, they should take the light in more, whatever he's talking. So, so that he can feel what Nigerians are feeling. And I'm not being sarcastic about this. I'm just being truthful. And that is fine. That is what we are going through. Now there's no petrol, there's no electricity. You know what, Messi, uh, uh, you know how much you spend to be able to power the generator in your house. You power for your vehicle, you go and buy black money. I know the problem here is that the filling stations are not even selling into jerry cans for you to be able to power your, you, you, you know that very well. So you have to resort to black market for you to buy. Because if you, if you queue for after four hours, I queue for four hours last, uh, sometime last week to buy fuel. Then it got to the point I wanted to buy a little for my generating. So they said, no, they're not selling. So I have to look for ways of buying black market for that. And you said the president, they should take more, they should take the light. I'm very happy about it. I'm not happy. I am. All right, Chris, is very quickly, the Independent National Electoral Commission on the front page of the nation, uh, through its chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, uh, yesterday said the commission staff remain nonpartisan. He's always saying, uh, he spoke to BBC News Africa. He said the election results will be transmitted electronically as provided by law. So the headline on the front page of the nation is, we remain non-partisan, INEC assures Nigerians. And it says the commission staff will remain non-partisan. That is what the ad setting up um, INEC stated. And by the constitution, the 1999 constitution has amended I, the INEC independent, that it is supposed to be independent electoral commission. Independent. In fact, I left me, I, the, that independent is not total. Until the power to appoint the chairman of INEC is removed from the office of the president. I think the National Assembly should have the power to appoint, uh, um, appoint the INEC commission because the situation where a sitting president appoints the chairman of, of the uh, electoral body, that to me is a bit partisan. But um, I'm happy that uh, um, the INEC chairman is saying that they've been independent and there will be no partiality. I hope that will also trickle down his staff because in the past election, we have seen where most of most INEC officials have um, um, compromised their job and were not independent and neutral enough. And that became a problem. And you come to see that a lot of the people that were involved in the electoral malpractices are not being prosecuted, which is why I like this current chairman, where he said that he wants the National Assembly to pass the um, Electoral Commission Offense Tribunal. That is a tribunal that the, the INEC and NGOs have been pushing for some time now at uh, the National Assembly. Once that, uh, that uh, tribunal, that act is passed and is set up, it will save them the problem of going through the rigors uh, of the courts. What how anybody arrest anybody for electoral malpractice? They just go there and I'm sure within weeks that, uh, uh, that will be taken care of. Unlike what we have now, where um, offenses and issues relating to um, uh, election takes months and even years to be prosecuted. Right. I hope right. that it will lead to his cause so that INEC could be as independent as right. supposed to be and very, very neutral in the coming election. Chris, thank you very much. Um, he says that Long claims that the, uh, the commission is close to uh, the All Progressives Congress, that we should look at the previous elections, the state elections uh, recently that they've been conducting of late. He says uh, different political parties have won in different elections in different states. So it's not true that INEC is close to APC, the ruling All Progressives Congress. Chris, thank you very much for your time. Chris Kendi Wandu, uh, Executive Director, African Governance and Leadership Initiative, who joined us via Zoom uh, in Lagos. So I appreciate your time, Chris. And uh, enjoy the rest much. of your week. And yes, and Kofi, take a drive to Awoyaya and the I won't go to Awoyaya, sir. Huh? I won't go. Chris, Chris, <laughs> Chris, the last time somebody was to meet up with me in, uh, from Awoyaya in, in VI, I left yeah. the mainland and got to, to VI, to uh, yeah. Oniru, no, no, to Oniru, no, no. Not that the is going before the person. For two yeah. hours, he told me, Kofi, I'm at my junction. Two hours. I'm coming out of my junction. Two hours. I won't go there, sir. <laughs> well, we have to go now. Thank you so much. Yes. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. You know what it means to, to drive from that axis? I, I, I really feel for those who stay, who live around there, Messi. It's not easy. So, it's so not fingers easy. are crossed. Fingers are I'm crossed. just hoping to see all the well, construction that's going on. We have a short break ahead. When we come back, we look at uh, aviation sector issues. And, of course, a strike by aviation uh, sector labor unions has been called of what's the impact being on the sector. All the right back.